Hey y'all, welcome back to Twin Oaks Family Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. Thanks for joining me at our YouTube channel, Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. And this video is about brooder lamps for providing supplemental heat for chicks. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe if you haven't. This is a time of year when many of us are going to be getting chicks, whether they're egg production chicks or meat production chicks. Those little chickies are so cute, but they need help keeping themselves warm enough and then especially we raise them in a rustic type barn setting that has really great ventilation really great air movement but that means that they're basically subjected to whatever the outside temperature is so we're in rural southeast ohio usa it's february 23rd 2024 we're going to be starting a little group of egg birds next week and then a little bigger group of meat birds within a couple weeks so we're going to be dealing with fluctuating temperatures cold temperatures and it's not going to be warm enough for our chicks they need an ambient temperature of about 95 degrees fahrenheit in their environment and so even with our egg chicks until they're fully feathered in they need a little bit of supplemental heat with our meat chicks they basically need probably supplemental heat throughout production we raise them to six weeks old and they grow fast but they don't feather in fast so at the upper end when we start them they need a 95 degree fahrenheit ambient temperature and then even when they're about six weeks old they still need about a 70 degree fahrenheit ambient temperature so especially like this time of year february march april very likely that we're gonna be needing to provide them with supplemental heat. And our go-to source for supplemental heat is brooder lamps. Now I know brooder lamps can be really controversial. A lot of people have strong feelings against brooder lamps, zero tolerance for brooder lamps, and I understand that because there is a legitimate fire hazard risk with them. We have to acknowledge that. And if we're gonna be using them, we have to be vigilant about their installation, about how they're being used, and about the integrity of the unit itself. So even though we do have definitely times that people say, no way, no brooder lamps, zero tolerance for them, then on the other hand, you have people like us that, as I said, they're our go-to supplemental heat source. The reason they're our go-to supplemental heat source is because in real life, real time, we've used them and we've used alternatives and we have consistently found that the brooder lamps were the most effective, efficient, and economical way for us to provide supplemental heat for our chicks. So let's take a look at a model one that's set up and I want to tell you some of the interesting things about heat lamps and some of our practical tips from having used them extensively with especially meat bird chicks but we also use them with our egg production chickens too so we have a model one set up here and this is a brooder lamp that uh, did come with a clamp we we sometimes call them clamp lamps because they typically come with another piece that's attached to them up here at the socket and kind of has an arm and a clamp. Um, I don't have one of those clamps to show you because we don't use them. So whenever we buy the lamps, we, we typically just get rid of the, the clamp attachment that comes with it because our preferred installation is to have them suspended securely from the ceiling on a chain. And then we run that chain through that top loop piece and we use an S hook to fasten that chain together. And we also take tape or twine and secure the cord to that chain. But that way we know it's secure and we can adjust the height of it. So this one is hung at 19 inches off the floor. Keep in mind, we would have a layer of bedding material like pine shavings on the floor, significant layers. So that's gonna raise the floor height just slightly. And uh, this is definitely the closest we would wanna have it hanging to the floor, 18 or 19 inches. We really wanna avoid having it any closer to the floor than that if we can help it. Now we do have a clear bulb in that one, but we actually prefer to use red bulbs. And so that's probably a 
a different discussion for a different day. We're not going to get into that in this video, but we do consistently use the red bulbs uh, with our meat birds and with our egg production birds as well. So um, I wanted to mention that the bulb on these is generating like 400 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit heat right there and then you can see where that beam is shining down on the floor so we're generating like 400 600 degrees Fahrenheit here and we're concentrating it and targeting it down here and what we're going to end up accomplishing is producing about a 95 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature right here in about a 16 inch spread under this bulb when it's hung at about 18 or 19 inches. So uh, from those kind of reference points, we realize that in the course of this heat transfer, we have a lot of heat loss right here, right? And so that's something to keep in mind because as we look at that circle of light underneath that lamp, I took a tape measure before we videoed and at its largest point, that circle of lighting is 64 inches across. But in fact, when we're at the center of that circle under that bulb and we come out 32 inches to this edge, there's really not much ambient heat out here. Hardly any. I can still feel a little, but hardly any. Um, when we get back in here, you know, like 16 inches out, I can feel a little bit of that warmth, but right here is where it's best. And our chicks are going to experience that in the very same way. So where they're really going to want to be to utilize this light is wherever this brightest part is coming down, we're going to get the most heat right out here at the edge of it. So when they utilize it, if it's at a, a good height for them, they're going to just put themselves in a circle with their tail facing in right there and they're going to rest in that light. And so I think I kind of mentioned like when we start meat birds and, and maybe I didn't mention it, but when we start meat birds, we're going to start a hundred of them. So we will probably have about six heat lights set heat lamps set up and we'll have them positioned so they're close enough. So the warmest parts are, are almost touching so that basically we've created kind of a blanket of warmth for them under the set of brooder lamps. And within that blanket of warmth space, we want to be able to include their waters and their feeders and the place for them to rest and the place for them to manure because that's basically the four things that they do in their routine, eat, drink, rest, and manure. So we want to give them comfortable ambient temperature to do all of those things in their environment. And, and we can do that effectively with the heat lamps. So yes, generating a lot of heat. Yes, transferring it in a concentrated targeted area. And that's part of why we have to acknowledge that there really is a fire hazard risk because because like we said, we're, we're making so much heat right here and we're targeting it at, at pine bedding. So, so we want to we want to make sure that that light is hooked in really securely, and we want to make sure that this unit is working correctly, and we want to make sure that we're not putting it too close to the floor, and we want to keep monitoring all of that. And so those are ways that we're being vigilant about prioritizing the safety of using them and using them um, in an appropriate way. And also, uh, side note to that, you know, we have a lot of natural airflow. I believe it's probably a good idea to keep in mind. I don't think you want to use these where there's not some air movement. I think if if these heat lamps were used, just kind of going off of logic here, if these heat lamps were used in an area where there wasn't some natural heat movement, I think we would have a risk of overheating the bulb. So that's probably something to keep in mind too. So we're going to run out of recording time, but the thing I want to wrap up with is about the cost want to kind of mention uh, a way that you could actually figure out what it would cost you to run a heat lamp. So this is kind of a neat little thing to know if you need to use supplemental heat from brooder lamps. We know that it takes four hours for a 250 watt bulb 
to use a single kilowatt hour unit of electrical energy. So you could go get your electric bill and from it find out what it costs for you from your electric supplier to get one kilowatt hour unit of electrical energy. Since there's six four hour periods in a 24 hour day, take that cost for um, your kilowatt hour of energy, multiply it by six, that's what it costs you to run a brooder lamp for a 24 hour period. So I'm gonna estimate that um, probably at least last time we ran these figures, cost it around $1.20 a day for us to run each 250 watt bulb in a brooder lamp. So uh, compared to other alternatives that we've tried, that was by far the most economical way for us to provide supplemental heat for chicks, even when we had to use multiple heat lamps. And this building is set up to accommodate as I said, 20 heat lamps at one time, they can be safely installed and safely run off of the electric. So uh, even with running multiples, we do notice it on our electric bill, but that was the most economical way for us to be able to provide supplemental heat to maybe up to 300 chickens at one time. So if you have any comments or questions, please, please give us your feedback and comments. Really appreciate you joining us and please subscribe to Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. We are going to be starting those